Thank you, Robert. I don't know if you guys noticed how many times he used the word heart, but it was amazing. And uh, the, the emphasis on the heart of God. <clears throat> and it's funny because I, uh, I had been just recently thinking about it, and uh, I had read a, a, a saying by Gandhi, and I realized, but it was the thing that kind of motivated me to start looking a little closer. He said something like, it's better to have a heart without words than words without heart. And um, I appreciate uh, Robert because uh, I appreciate all of us, but I mean, today, hearing a heart, not just the words, he you did use the words, but he, I felt his heart after the Lord. And, I, and I'm also blessed... Um, just as one who ministers the word, you know, to to consider the fact that um, <clears throat> in the book of Acts it it mentions those that were of Berea were more noble than those that, of Thessalonica in that they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether those things they were being taught were of God and and I, I clearly see him not just listening to a class or whatever, and I know that you also, but it's obvious, it was obvious today that, that he gets into the Word and wants the Spirit of God to show him the same things that are, are more or other, but from, from that heart of God. <clears throat> so anyway, I, uh, I was just going to read a few little thoughts that had come to me pertaining to the heart and uh, realizing that the, those things that come from his heart come by oneness. They don't just come by, by being special or a special minister or whatever. They come by oneness. And those who, who enter in through oneness, that's where it'll come. And, and the flood will come. <clears throat> and so I, I jotted down this thought. Oneness is more than the river that enters the ocean. Oneness is like, it is, it is more like a river that enters into the ocean and that, that um, ocean which is his heart, ours, our heart is like that, uh, that river, but it empties out into the fullness and gets lost. We get lost into the fullness that is him. We're not just trying to s stand next to God and get something from him. And, and uh, I heard that flow here. And then just some other thoughts that I wrote down. Um, uh, all real truth originates in the heart of God. And uh, I just want to confirm what Robert was saying because that's, that's where we're going to get it. Once we try to grasp after it with our minds, then it becomes distorted and we've missed the point. See, we get our mind mixed up instead of being a heart that is like that river that ends up emptying out into the ocean and finding all of those things. <clears throat> I, I wrote uh, God's heart thoughts, putting in the parenthesis, are more life-changing than natural human thoughts concerning his heart thoughts. In other words, his heart thoughts will change our life. But if we use our mind only to grasp those heart thoughts, we're going to miss what the Lord's saying through Robert or through anyone who's trying to minister where they have been like a river and empty out into the fullness of the ocean. Um, progress is made when the heart asks the questions, and I really believe this. Progress is made when the heart asks the questions. The questions from the mind are a trap. The motive behind the intellectual questions are merely to figure out the problem. That's our mind. We're trying to figure out the problem. So we only, some people only know how to ask questions from their mind, and they think that the questions to be asked are in relationship to the problems of, of their life in this world, or their problems of why can't I get more of the Lord, or their, this or that. Uh, <clears throat> Progress is made when the heart asks the questions and then leave it to him to reveal himself in those things. And it will, um, 
it will take the eyes of your heart to see what is in his heart. In other words, heart issues require heart pursuit. I, the first commandment, Jesus said the first and second fulfill all of them. So to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and you know, to pursue him on that basis. And then I wrote, Ten tears can come from your emotion or from your heart. Tears, literal, physical manifestation. They can come from your emotions or they can come from your heart. A blind heart has no lovers. And what, I, what that means is that you can't find the one that you love with your, with your blind heart. If, you're, if you haven't begun to move out of just being a river that's trying to gather in whatever you need instead of losing yourself in the fullness that is Him, your heart is like a suitcase. What you carry in it will be what you wear. Be it bitterness and anger, etc., or joy and peace and love, forgiveness, those kind of things. So, thank you, Robert, and thank you for all of, all of you that seek the Lord from your heart and that seek His heart not just his information or his answers for our life here, but finding our life in him. What a, what a blessing to be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Thank God. Thank God.